بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم سالہ خان ہیر اور ناو کنٹینیئنگ دی ٹاپک کنٹینیئنگ دی پیپر ناو دس اس پارٹ بی اف دی پیپر سو کوئسٹن نمبر ون اس تو فائنڈ آر دی ڈسکریٹ ٹائم کنولوشن آف دیس ٹو سنگل اس ایکس آف این اس گیون ایچ آف این اس گیون اور یو ہاو تو فائنڈ آر دی ڈسکریٹ ٹائم کنولوشن وچ مینز یو ہاو تو فائنڈ آر وائی آف این اور وائی آف این اس گیون ایز کے رننگ فرام نیگیٹیو انفینیٹی ٹو پوزیٹیو انفینیٹی x of k into h of n minus k and this is exactly the same question that I have solved in the previous videos in assignment number 2 so you can check it out over there I will try to give the link in the description of assignment 2 this question is already solved over there fine now the second question relates to uh, the what the block diagram so we are asked about the direct form 1 and direct form 2 so, so let me, uh, you know, do it. Uh, so, I told you to do what? To take your x, uh, uh, wait, 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 wait. To, to first of all, the first step is to first equate this equation in terms of y of t. So, y of t would be the second derivative of x of t plus three times the first derivative of x of t minus x of t and now uh, these would come at this side so you have a minus 2 times the second derivative of y of t and uh, plus 2 times the first derivative of y of t and what this whole multiplied with a negative 2 this whole multiplied with a negative 2 isn't it like this it is Fine. So now you draw the system. So I told you to take uh, x of t on one side and you take your y of t on the other side. And in between these two, oh wait, I, I, I made it very far. I made it very far. So this is just a smaller representation. So, you know, I could, uh, I could do what? I could make them nearer. If this is my x of t and this is my y of t. So what do you have? Have a look. With x, second derivative is involved, first derivative is involved, minus 1 is involved. So first let's say over here I have a minus 1. So over here I have this thing, negative x of t. Then I need the first derivative. So this is the first derivative over here and I need to multiply it with 3. So over here is my 3. Fine. Then what do I need? I need the second derivative. I need this thing that is the second derivative and I need to multiply it with nothing. So this is 1 and these 3 are all added together. So I would add them together. I would add them together. Now these 3 have been added. Now for y of t what do you do? In terms of y of t you need the second derivative, you need the first derivative. And I made a mistake. This is not plus, this is minus. Yes? This is minus. So you need the first derivative. So here is the first derivative of y of t. You need to multiply it with a uh, negative uh, 2. You need to multiply it with a negative 2, right? And then you need the second derivative. Yes, you need the second derivative. And you need to multiply it with what? You need to multiply it with a negative 2 again. Now what do you need? You need to add these two together. So have a look. I have added them together. And so this red portion represents the y of t. The green portion represents the x of t. What do you have to do finally? You need to add these two together. x and y are all added together. So over here I add them together. So this is the representation. And now to get to my y of t, I need to multiply this with finally with a negative 2. And this would get me to my required output. This is my negative 2. Fine. Now, the next thing is, we are asked about direct form 1 and direct form 2 both. So if this is, let's say, my direct form 1. And how is this? Because I just directly obtained it from the given expression. My direct form 2 would be what? I would have to use the property of LTI systems, the cascading property. If I shift system 2 to the left, system 1 to the right, apply the same input, I will have the same output. 
fine so which means that now I would shift this system over here which means I have a plus then I have a a, a what a negative 2 right then I have a delay circuit fine this is multiplied with a negative 2 again an error over here fine then again a delay circuit a differentiator right uh, then a negative 2 and over here this is back and now what do you have you are at this point now you have touched this point to this point so this is basically the junction fine over here I would have this as the junction so now what would I do is now I would have the green color so this is it so this would go directly uh, first into a delay circuit right over here I hope you can see it now this would be multiplied with a 3 you have to add them you have an adder over here you have like this fine you have another differentiator over here you have not multiplied it with anything you have added it over here whatever is the x of t again over here what the same y of t would be over here as in this particular case this is the property of LTI system now what can I do from this equation I can do what that I could replace these two delay circuits by a single delay circuit so if I have let's say I draw it over here yes I would draw it small okay so I have my x of t alright it is given to an adder like this fine then you have a negative 2 involved this is the junction part this is the final adder this is your y of t what do you have at this point you have one delay circuit fine over here it comes to an adder over here it comes to an adder it gets added over here gets added over here this is a negative 2 this is a 3 and one another differentiator over here it is multiplied with a negative 2 over here it is finite so this is another representation from the direct form 2 so that's it okay so now uh, in the beginning of the video you know I, I, I gave you question number one and I said that I've already solved this uh, in the assignment okay but that was not in our paper uh, that was in someone else's paper that was an affiliated college paper our paper uh, you know our you know UT Peshawar question number one was this one okay so you are given the x of n, you are given the impulse response h of n and you are asked the discrete time convolution of it. So what do you have? You know that the discrete time convolution y of n, this would be equal to summation k running from a negative infinity to positive infinity x of k into h of n minus k. And now what do I have? So this particular thing means that you would be keeping your x of k constant and you would be shifting your h of n minus k. But have a look, we know from the properties of convolution that this convolution is commutative, which means that we can do it as what? Or y of n is equal to summation k running from a negative infinity to positive infinity h of k into x of n minus k, which means that now the commutative property says what? That you can keep your h of k as it is and you can have what? You can shift your x of k so the first and the foremost step is what you know to change the variable so step number one is to change the variable so i would do it over here x of k x of k so this would become your h of k this would become your k axis now what do you have you have to draw x of n minus k so this is located at a positive 2 or a negative 2 so i would confirm uh, this first this is located this is located at a positive 2, yes. So this is located at positive 2, this is correct. Now what do you have? Uh, you would have to shift this. So let me draw what? Uh, let me draw it like this. If this is my k axis and if I draw my x of n minus k and if this is the case for n less than 0, so if I draw my signal is shifted n units toward the left, so this would exist at the point n minus 2, right? 0 would be somewhere here. So this would go to n minus 2 point. And what do you have? You have to multiply it with h of k. You have to multiply it with h of k and then you have to take the summation. So h of k exists over here somewhere like this. 
So I have a loop. Do we have any overlap? So we don't have any overlap, which means that the output for n less than zero is equal to zero. Y of n is equal to zero for n less than zero. Fine. Now what do you have? Now for n greater than zero. So what would be the case? This could either lie uh, somewhere in between these two, somewhere here. At any point, this could lie. And let me tell you how would this be. So let this be the case if this is my k axis. If this is lying somewhere over here, this would be the point n plus 2. This could be 0, this could be 1. Let's say this is over here, this is lying at 2. So something over here, if it is lying, so we could have a convolution based on this particular thing. So which means that now I will check it for each and every value. So what do I have is that I would remove this and now I would check it for each and every value separately. And don't you think I have made a mistake somewhere? I was confused in n-2 n and this values and this and that. So I made a mistake. Yes, I made a mistake. And where I, I don't know, I have not found out h of minus k. I have to shift h of minus k, okay? So which is x of minus k, I am shifting in this case. So let's say I draw it over here with the red color. So let it be a little prominent. If this is my k axis, so this would lie at minus 2 now. At minus 2, the value would be 1 over 2. This is 0. And, and this is your x of minus k. Fine. So this is minus 2. You shifted n units over here. This is n minus 2. Fine. So this is fine. Now you shift it towards the right by n units. Then again, you have n minus 2 somewhere. So now uh, we do it, let's say, for n equal to 0. So if my n is equal to 0, if my n is equal to 0, which means... Uh, that it would now be located at uh, n minus 2, so it will be located at minus 2 again. So, so that th this thing would be located at minus 2. Minus 2 would be 1 over 2, right? Uh, this which is your x of 2 minus k. And you have your own that is starting at 0, something like this, which is your h of k. And then you have no, no overlap, you have what? you have a 0 again. So y of 0 is 0. y of 0 is 0. Fine. Now for n equal to 1, so what do you have? Uh, let me write it with the red pen. n equal to 1 would be like this. This is my k axis. You would have an x of... Uh, and I made a mistake again over here. This is h of minus x of minus k directly. Now it would be x of 1 minus k. Fine, so 1 minus k means now this would be 1. So if n is 1, it would be located at where? If n is 1, 1 minus 2, it would be located at a negative 1. Fine, so if it's located at a negative 1, still we don't have any overlap because my x of k, that is your h of k in this case, is starting from 0, which is something like this. So again, you don't have any output. Of course, the integration. So it is 0 for n equal to 1 as well. So y of 1 is also equal to 0. Fine. Now for n equal to 2. So for n equal to 2, what do you have? Uh, this is your k axis. So n equal to 2, you would have your x of 2 minus k. So which means that now this would be located at 0. The value is 1 over 2. Fine. And your h of k is starting from 0 as well. So it's also located at 0 and the value is 1. The value is 1. And then it goes on like this. Fine. So which means that we only have a single overlap in this case. And that is this particular one. So 1 over 2 multiply 1 and this would give me y of 2 is equal to 1 over 2. Is that clear? It should be. Fine. The next. The next is if my uh, uh, n is equal to 3, so I have an x of 3 minus k and 3 minus k now means what that if n is equal to 3, so it would be located at a positive 1. This 1 over 2 will be located at positive 1, right? And you have your x, uh, h of k allocated at 0 as well. So at 0 you have it as well. At 1 you would have the overlap. So we have again a single overlap and now that is at 1. So at 1 what do you have? 
it's a 1 over 2 and then multiplied by 2. So the value at y of 3 would now be equal to 1. Clear? Yes. So 4, n equal to 4. If this is my k x is n equal to 4, you have x of 4 minus k, this would be located at 2, the value is 1 over 2, and x of uh, h of k is located where? At 0, it is starting at 0, then at 1, and then at 2, at it, it has its maximum weight, and then at 3, it comes down, 4 comes down. So, which means now again, it has uh, a single value, and that is existing at 2, and the value is what? So, it would be 1 over 2 multiplied by the maximum, which is 3 by 2, so you would have or oh what you would have a 3 by 2 in this particular case yes so which is a 1.5 so y of 4 would be 3 by 2 fine now for n equal to 5 so n equal to 5 uh, would give me an x of n minus uh, 5 minus k right so and now it would be located at uh, n is equal to 5, so in my suite it would be located at 3. At 3, right? And at 3 we have the value of x of k, and that is equal to what? That is equal to uh, 2. Yes, 2. And this is the maximum at 1. At 2, sorry. And then at 1 you have it like... Uh, no, 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 no. At 3 is this particular value 2, then this is at 2, and uh, at 1 you have like this, and at 4 you have like this. So it means one overlap again, which is now at 3, and at 3x of k is 2, and uh, this uh, impulse that the, this h of k is 1 over 2. Am I doing it correct, right? So my y of 5 would be again equal to 1. Y of 5 would be again equal to 1. Now, for n equal to 6, so what do you have for n equal to 6? So, let me use the red color. Where is it? Okay, here it is. So, n equal to 6. This is my kx is n equal to 6. Now, it would be located at 4. That is your x of uh, 6 minus k. Right? This would now be located at 4. And, and, and what do you have? Your x of k is value at 4 is again 1 so this would be 1 so we have a single overlap then at 3 it is 2 at 1 it is maximum uh, no 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 at 4 it is 1 yes then you have at 3 then at 2 at 1 it's again like this and at 0 so so this is your h of k right and then of course the summation and over here i made it wrong so what do you have is that now the overlap is occurring at point 4. So at point 4 the value of uh, x of 6 minus k is 1 over 2 and the value of uh, h of k is what? It's 1. So 1 over 2 multiply 1 would give you 1 over 2. So y of 6 is equal to 1 over 2. 7. 7, 7, 7. For n equal to 7. You have an h of x of 7 minus k, which means 5. It would now be located at 5, the impulse. But have a look. Uh, this has x of h of k has already finished at 4. 4, yes. Then at 3 like this, at 2 like this, at 1 again like this, and at 0 again like this. So which means that now again we don't have any overlap. And further you shift it, you shift it, you shift it, you get a 0. Fine. So I could write over here that my y of 7 is equal to 0 or I could write over here, I could generalize it. When the value of n is smaller than uh, 0 and it's greater than 7. So over here my output would be 0 and I hope I have put these brackets right. At 7 it is also 0, right? So I would write over here a 0 as well. And at 0 it is also 0. So I could write another z an equal to sign as over here as well. Okay. Yes, when n is greater than 7 and it's less than 0. 
Yes, so I could, you know, uh, draw the graph. If this is my n axis, you have your y of n over here. So let me draw it with a red color. At 0, what do you have? You have a 0. At 0, you have a 0. And similarly, at the left, you have all zeros. Okay? At 1, you have a 0. At 2, you have what? At 2, you have 1 over 2. At 2, you have 1 over 2. At 3, you have 1. At 3, you have 1. At 4, you have 3 by 2, which is 1.5. So this is 1.5. At 5, you have 1 again. At 6, you have 1 over 2 again. And at 7, it becomes 0. And then it stays 0 after what? So this is your final answer. So that's all about it, okay? I'm feeling a little tired. I have solved the midterm paper for you guys. So that's all about today. That's all about the midterm course, including the paper. See you in the next lecture with the four-year series representation with a new topic, the new chapter, after the exams with a fresh looks final term paper, final term course. So till then, take care of yourselves and everyone around you. And do remember me in your prayers and do subscribe to the channel if you have not yet subscribed. So till the next video. Goodbye.